Hi, everyone. I'm Carolyn. First, here's what happened in Carolyn Toss podcast. So this um, question is for everyone on the panel, for Adama, Adana, Sterling, and Regina. Um, one of my favorite scenes in this film is the scene where um, Trinity ha is wearing the mime uh, makeup, and she has on this yellow dress, and it starts with her on the road doing the, you know, holding up the sign hawk for Jesus, and it becomes this big, intense moment, and it started to feel very dark and deep, and then it transitions into the church. And for me, that was very powerful because it talks about how a lot of women, especially the church mothers and the leaders and the wives and the deaconesses, are they wear facades. A lot of them wear like they wear their physical makeup, but they put on this um, this spiritual facade as well, where they're being told that you have to be a, a supportive, virtuous woman. You have to do these specific things. You have to support these men who've done extremely bad things and you have to push through it. And that's how faith is, you know, like when um, Trini goes to her mother and mother's like, well, you just go back to the Bible. She's like, I'm tired of going back to the Bible. And like, at the end, Regina, I love when you just like wipe the makeup and it's just like you're fed up. So can you guys just ex ex um, explain that scene and the process of going through that scene, especially Regina, because it's so, um, I think, physically and emotionally demanding. And for the ladies, like for creating the scene and your inspiration for it. You want to go with it? Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the inspiration was to uh, definitely have Regina be, um, or Regina, <laughs> Trinity be at her most false. So she's putting on because the cameras are rolling and now she has this makeup on and what I wanted it to be was like all of these layers of masks and that's when you finally start to see her crack was when she just has on she has on too much um and you know I I, I think that it, it was very inspired by just a lot of women that I know in general um in the church or otherwise who bear all of this weight until it breaks them, um, especially in their in their relationships. And I should note that it's uh, the mime, the praise, praise miming is real yeah. for those for those who don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a very real thing. And I think um, thematically it worked in, in, a, in a layered capacity where not only is she is the facade cracking, but she is it's cracking finally, because she's in this position of what Trinity views as kind of like the court jester, jester in the hierarchy of church. Like she, yeah. she, she's the queen. She sees herself as the queen. And, you know, I, there used to be a line in there. Uh, yeah, I think where, where um, we had, I don't think it made the film, but where we had Trinity say, you know, you don't ask the highest level of the court to play, you know, the jester. And Trinity feels that she feels like she is fine. She's at her breaking point because yeah. she is, this is the lowest for her that she could go. Um, and so I, I think the mime makeup also is representative of that. Yeah, she's at sure. her, she's at the bottom. Yeah. I think there's a sense of, 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 um, you know, when you feel like you are doing everything you can, that this, this man has asked you to do <laughs> That which you are most uncomfortable and and then everything that has happened and, and and he's just had this, you know, Lee Curtis has just had this powerful scene with that, with the boy. And so to know something is true and to experience that it's true, to hear a scene where you and your husband, you know, you all can't have a love scene, but he looks at a at a at a young man and tender tenderly and honestly says you're perfect. You watch that and the camera see that I think it's that humiliation you know and then you know the only thing I think in that thankfully is that mask but th then it just you know I think you know there's a fresh there's a, a level of pain and, and frustration that you know finally comes up for everyone and, and I think you know we had the scene with her mother so it's not simple as why don't you just leave that seems like you know, that is the question of a young girl, you know, <laughs> because it's, it is, it's far more complicated in, at least in Trinity's world and to just leave that. Well, she already said she's not going anywhere, so she can't leave, you know, her covenant to God won't allow her. I don't know if I have anything to add. It would just be mansplaining a woman's mind, so I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. Well, you don't have anything to say with regards to how Lee Curtis was watching that scene and not listening to what his wife was saying. 
Oh, well, yeah, I do have some. Yeah, I can say something to that. Um, thank you, Karen. I appreciate the, the give, giving me the space to speak um, as a man here. No, it was, she was, there's so much frustration, I think, that she wants to say directly to me. And uh, she also kind of like keeps herself, I can't be that mad at him right now because if I allowed myself to be as mad as I actually was, I would kill him. And she's able to say that, but still like the, the frustration has to be shared with like the intrusion and everybody else inserting themselves into her marriage and what she should be doing with her life. And she's like, I get to choose what I do within my own marriage, even if it means the day that I have to take this man out. But y'all telling me what I should or should not do need to step back and let me go through this myself. And so him hearing that, like I, I think he, he's, you can always sort of be cognizant of the pain that you cause another human being, but until they articulate it, you can sort of live in a place of plausible deniability. And then when they actually hit you with like, no, bro, this is, this is hurting deeply. And then, so there's a recognition and acknowledgement and a sadness for the fact that you cause this person that you love pain. He loves his wife. And the idea that he causes her hurt hurts him. And still he doesn't know exactly how not to do it other than to focus on his church, right? Like I think him trying to put everything and all of his energy into getting his church back keeps him from uh, having the playground, which is, you know, the devil's playground, the idle mind, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's kind of how it resonated with me. And like, I, she was saying it, Regina was saying it as Trinity and Sterling was hearing it as Lee Curtis. And I, I, my heart broke because I was like, I hate that I hurt somebody that I love. Great, thank you so much. Right on, Carol.